Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of Dan Richard Fishing. And today we're gonna be installing maybe not the most expensive fun toy, but absolutely a very critical, critical item on your boat. And all of it fits in just this little bag. Everything is literally right here. And that is a live well timer. So part of what I'm doing this year is really focusing on fish care. So we're doing a little bit of a fish care series and we already did an episode where uh, we changed the aerator pump uh, on my boat. We put in an aerator pump that was stronger and also I had to fix the filtration system, uh, the strainer cup on it because it had been sheared off and we needed to put a whole new thing on so that way we wouldn't be dealing with junk being sucked into the system and having to manually pull it all apart and uh, the other part that I mentioned was that we did not have any kind of timer so what we're gonna do is we're gonna install a live well timer and what this will do is it'll allow me to set time intervals while I'm out on the water so the aerator automatically kicks on and oxygenates and replenishes the water inside the live well without me having to do it manually um, and this is actually from Flowrite and they have two versions. They have this version here that I got, which is just the timer. And they also have a very similar version, but also comes with the three-way switch that allows you to fill the live well and activate the timer. We're gonna actually do it using uh, a, a switch that's already on the boat, but we're gonna change it and take advantage of kind of the wiring that's already in place. So we're gonna go through all that. Also, don't forget guys, you can use the chapters below to click and skip the different parts of the video if I'm blah blah blahing too much because I do love the sound of my own voice. And of course, lest we forget, all I ask in return for putting these videos together is that you hit the like button, that you're subscribed if you don't mind, and uh, make sure you hit the bell notification, that way you know every time we release a new video, this helps me grow the channel, get a bigger audience, fund some of these projects, and all that good stuff. So, let's move on. All right, let's go over the individual components that we'll be using in this installation. It's pretty simple. First up is the actual timer switch. So this is what controls the timer itself. All right, simple little circuit board and we've got the electrical connections right here. The faceplate, so this is the faceplate here and the way it's designed is this protects it so you can see it's got the nice cover right there. And on the back is some 3M tape. So the 3M tape is meant to glue against your console. Uh, you would you know, stick this to your console, stick it onto a fiberglass area, wherever. It's a little complicated for me because I've got carpet in the boat and all around the console is kind of carpeted and the plastic of the console, I have nowhere to put this. So I'm gonna explain what I did for this. I've, I've already done it off camera. It's already ready. I did it like a month ago so that it would be ready. Our little control knob, of course, very important little control knob. We have a three-way switch. This is gonna replace the rocker switch that's already in the boat that is a two-position rocker switch. So this is a gamma waterproof three-way rocker switch and it's got built-in LEDs. So we've got the amber and the red. Most of these rocker switches have standardized casing so they all fit in the same hole. You just double check the measure but they are all sort of a standard, more or less, just double check. But this will be a direct swap right in the hole of the old one. And last but not least, of course, we have the instructions how to install the whole thing. So you can see the instructions cover both versions, either the timer or the timer with the switch integrated. And Flowrite is a very reputable, very well-known company. They sell all kinds of live well components. You can go check out their site. I'll put a link in the description below. And of course, I'll have a link in the description below where you can buy all this. Um, and it's also made in the USA. So very confident that this is a high quality product and their customer support is also fantastic. You give them a call, they answer all your questions. And if you watch any of my videos, you know that customer service is very important to me. I do not, I won't touch a company if their customer support sucks, so. Let's get this thing installed. All right guys, so you've seen my control panel before on the boat. This is uh, on the console, and this is the live well fill right here. So unfortunately, you can hear it going. This is only a one-way switch, so it's either on or off. There's no third switch. Now this guy here, this switch here has a third position. This is what controls the lights on the boat. So this will control just the port lights and charges my USB up here. However, if I flick it upwards, it turns on the dash lights and some of the courtesy lights. So I tried to see if I could find another one of these switches and I just could not find it because I wanted the switches to match, but it was just impossible. I couldn't find it. This is an older boat. These switches are made specifically for Princecraft and I called uh, Princecraft Corporate and a bunch of their authorized dealerships and nobody has this switch. So I have no choice. I had to get something different. So I got the smallest rocker switch I could find. It doesn't exactly match, but I still think it'll look nice. 
and it is the exact same size as this opening. So we're gonna open this whole panel up and we're gonna find our wiring and then we're gonna wire this guy up. And I'll explain how these are wired up and easy way to test this if you're not sure what the switch does exactly. I'll show you guys how to figure that out. So the first step is gonna be running all of our wiring to where it needs to go and wiring in the new switch. Then after that, we'll go ahead and actually install the timer interface and let me show you where we're gonna put it. So when it came time to installing this little interface piece here, I had to find a flat surface that I could install it and there just was not any available. This is too curved. Over here, it's too big, like this doesn't fit. It doesn't fit here. Even if I hadn't had the USB, it might have fit there, but I just don't have anywhere on the plastic. And I didn't want to put it on the side of the boat over here because I didn't want this thing to get smacked because I do actually sometimes brush my leg up against here. There's not that much room. So here's what I did. So right near my switches down below over here, I actually made a custom little aluminum piece that I riveted to the boat. So that's the battle plan for the timer control. Okay guys, so this is a Gamma Electronics 23E3BB. So this is a waterproof three-way switch. And the way it works is basically, these are your pos this is your positive, this would be your negative, and then you're gonna go ahead and wire up whatever your out is. So if you want this to go to the live well pump, it'll go out to the live well pump. If you want this to go out to the timer, that'll go to the timer. So this would be all your positives this would be all your grounds. So you just gotta make sure that you line these up. So let me show you how to test and figure out how a switch works. So what I've done is right here, I've just taped the ground probe onto the ground of the battery just because it's, it's harder to do, it's hard to do just freehand. And then we know that power and ground need to go to the center, okay? So the way to test where power goes, you simply have to touch the middle prong to the positive of the battery. And then you'll see if I touch the prong, I've got power. But if I touch anywhere else, I've got nothing. Oh. So you can see I've got nothing going on. Now I'll turn the switch on to one to that position. Go ahead and touch, and then you'll see none of these prongs do anything. Nothing does there. Here's the middle prong. And the, but if I touch this one, this one is now active. So that means this prong becomes live when the switch is in this position. And you'll see on the other side, nothing else is happening. Then if I go ahead and switch it downwards like that. This prong is no longer active and this one is. So that's how we can tell what becomes active when the switch is on. Just very simple test if you're not sure with your battery. So that means all of these are ground. Now on this guy here, these are what activate the lights. So these need to be jumpered via the spade connector. So I'll need to run a spade connector from here to here, here to here, and from here to there, here to there. And that will power on the lights. So we'll simply jumper them over. All right, so you can see I actually already started to get the switch out of here. Uh, and you do so by pushing down on these prongs that are here and the whole thing just pops out. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this panel off. It'll just be a lot easier to get at the wires. All right, here we go. There's our mess of wires and this is the switch we're gonna play with. So it actually has three wires connected. So we're gonna test these three wires. This will be the ground, it's black wire, this will be the ground. And one of these will be live, and the other one will be the switched power. So, pretty easy to find out, we'll just touch and make a contact. But there's also fuses built in, that's what these things here are. So we can just trace the wire, whichever wire comes from this lower fuse to the switch we know is live. And of course another very easy way is to simply use the tester. So, I can just touch ground, right here, and go ahead and touch live power, and boom. There's our 12 volts. You can see the needle is going. And if I touch down here, you can see nothing's happening. And if I turn on the switch, we would get live power. So now let's go ahead and disconnect everything. There's our ground. There's our power. And there's our go-to. There we go. Switch is out. And you can see new switch will just pop right in like so. Now, if I don't put this in and I just go direct here, I can actually connect this. So this is ground. We'll make this side ground. And we'll make this side live. And then we'll connect this to here. So I've got this wired up. When I push up here, I don't know if you can hear it on the, on the audio, but the uh, aerator pump is engaging. 
but the light isn't on because I have not jumpered this to here. So if I were to jumper this over to here, the light would turn on. We'll need to jumper this to this. So that means I actually need to redo this connector right here because it needs to be two wires going into this connector. All right, now here's the fun part. I'm gonna try and explain how we need to wire this because there is a little bit of craziness going on. So this provides 12 volt power to the switch and will provide power to the pump. Now, when I switch on the pump full time, it powers this wire here that goes directly to the pump, all right? So this goes to the back of the boat and powers the pump. Now, when I switch this on the other way, it's gonna send 12 volt power to the timer relay, and that's what will engage the timer relay. And then the timer relay will have a wire coming out of it that also needs to go to the pump. But technically, that one that goes to the pump just needs to patch into this wire that's here. So I will actually need to also add a jumper wire to this guy that is gonna go from the relay to here, and that'll power on the pump. Now, it'll be connected to this part of the switch, but it won't matter because when the switch is not on in this position, it's not, ground, it's not sending a ground connection to the light. So technically, the light should not come on. That's the battle plan. So, I'll explain it again once we have it all wired up and hopefully it makes sense, but basically this wire here is what's gonna control everything because it's this wire that ultimately goes to the aerator pump and needs to power it. So that means the output from the switch needs to touch onto this and the output just in general when I turn on the switch so the aerator's on full time also needs to go to this wire. All right, so first things first guys, let's just push in the switch into position. Oh, there you go. That looks cool. Well, <laughs> there'll be no mistaking which switches for the live well, that's for sure. And you know what I could do if I really want to make this look good is I can actually replace all of these switches with these. So Gamma does sell um, switches that are just individual, that are just single position. So I could technically replace these with single position switches. And I've decided red is going to be on full time and amber will be when the timer is on. Let's get going by creating the ground jumper wire. So we're gonna need two ground jumper wires, okay? So we're gonna be using 16 gauge uh, tin coated silicone wire. And we're gonna be using the blue spades, okay? So blue is for 16 to 14 gauge. Uh, and uh, we're gonna get our crimpers out. And of course, I really like my Titan Ratchet crimpers, love these guys. I upgraded to these about a year ago, fantastic. I have a couple of uh, different tools from Titan and every single one of them are awesome. Again, there'll be links in the description below to pretty much everything that's here. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. All right, guys, there you go. That one's done. So we've got our two jumper wires. So let's get those connected. Okay, so here's our switch here. So we've got two ground connections to make. So we're gonna make this side, the left side, the ground. So we're gonna go ahead and connect. Actually, let's do the bottom first, probably the most logical. So there's one, two, that's jumpered. And then we need to jumper this guy to this guy, and then jumper in the center is the actual ground. There we go. With that done now, we're gonna go ahead and create the positive jumpers. Now, it's a little bit more complicated because this guy here needs three wires going into the spade connector. So the original brown with orange stripe. We're going to need a positive one that goes to this guy, the jumper for the light. And then we're going to need one that goes back to the actual relay switch. Then on the lower part, you need one that has a wire going to the relay switch as well, and a small jumper that goes to the very, very bottom prong. So uh, we'll have to make some custom wires here. So let's start with the bottom one uh, and we'll go from there. 
Here you go guys, so this is the cable that I've made for the lower section. So you can see we've got the dual jumper right here, so it's jumpered. That'll go for the light. And this is what's gonna provide power to the timer relay. All right, so we're gonna disconnect our live power just to make this easier to get at. All right, here we go. So, uh, let's see, so we're gonna connect our jumper to the light, then our power that goes to the relay. So that's what's gonna power the relay. I fish the wire down here. And then our live power goes here. So now, when I switch that on, you can see the amber light comes on. And this wire here will have power going to it. And then we just need to do our super jumper to turn this guy on. So let's do that part next. All right, so next up, I'm gonna cut this off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this guy because this is what goes to the actual pump, okay? I'm gonna cut this off. I'm gonna create a jumper that goes to the pump, but also to the light. And then on the light, I'm gonna create a jumper that then has the wire that would be power from the relay to here. So by doing that, I don't have three, I'm not trying to force three wires into a single spade crimp, because you're not really supposed to do that. The most you can put is two. Uh, so that way I'll have two here and two here, and that will be optimized. That way I'm not trying to do anything funky. All right, well, let's cut this guy off. And let's get started. Okay, here we go. And then this, we're gonna, so this will eventually be power from the switch to here. So again, this will go to the 12 volt output of the relay, which will then send power to this wire, sending it to the pump. And we'll test that. I'll show you guys how that works. Sometimes these connectors are a little too tight. There we go, okay. So there you can see, pump is active, and this means the timer's on. Of course, we need to wire up the relay, but we're good. So there you go, pump's on, you can hear it going. And that'll be powering the relay. All right, so far so good. All right guys, I just realized we forgot one little thing, and that is we've got our power wires, but we have no ground for the switch. So that means we actually need to jumper in a ground. So the ground connection that we have on this side that is used when the pump is on, we need to go ahead and jumper in a ground wire that also goes to the relay switch. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead, and we'll need to pop this out, uh, redo it, and go ahead and add the ground wire. All right guys, here we go, we've got this fixed. So <laughs> this is what goes to the light. This is what provides the ground. And we now have a nice long cable that will go to the relay switch. And uh, yeah, and then we'll reconnect everything. So this goes on the bottom section. So we start with light, going to the switch, main ground, and then the ground for the pump when it's always on. So let's reconnect everything in here. And yeah, it can be a little tough to get stuff in here, but that's okay. By the way, sometimes you might notice that the prongs are really, really tight. And I noticed on my yellows, the prongs are super tight. So I just use a little flathead to open them up a little bit. And then we can put our jumper back in here and there. Okay, there we go, perfect. So now when this is switched on, we now have power and ground going to the relay. Beauty, okay, now we're good. I'll just go ahead and pass our wire through. Now we're ready to install the timer relay. 
All right, guys, we're getting there. We're almost done. But uh, just really quick while we're working on this, if you're, you know, you're wondering about how I use these crimps and the right sizes and shrink wrap and tools and all that stuff, I've actually done several videos uh, on how to do this kind of wiring. So I'm not really going too into detail in this video. So of course, if you want to see that, I'll put links in the description below to older videos that you can go and check out that goes a little bit more in detail about wiring, okay? All right, next up, I got a drill right here, this uh, hole into the boat that I haven't done yet. And of course, I made sure there's no wires behind here or anything. That's always a little scary, but we're good. All right, beauty. So now we're just going to pass our wires under here. Then we can wire it all up, get it ready. Here are our wires. So now we're just going to connect some spade connectors to this, and then we'll be able to connect it to our timer. Perfect. Okay. So on this guy here, this is ground, this is 12 volt power, and this goes to the pump. So here's our ground. Then we'll just use our battery tester here and we'll double check to make sure we've got the right unit here. So this provides power. There we go. And then, last but not least, this is what's going to send power to the pump when it's engaged. So now, just like this, it should work. There you go. Yeah, so I'm just testing it, so I'm putting on timer, and that's working. So a really easy way to test this is I've got my battery tester connected to the relay, and the relay timer is simply going to, I've got it on the lowest setting, so one minute. So I've got the ground connected, and I've got the positive connected to the power out to the pump. So I'm gonna turn it on, and after a minute, you should see this actually shut off. So there, so now you can see it's on, the needle's turned, and let's just give it 60 seconds. One minute later. And there you go, you just saw it shut off and it clicked. So there you go, it's working perfectly, exactly the way we want it. And what'll happen is in 15 minutes, it'll actually click on again by itself and it'll run for another minute. All right, we're ready to go ahead and put our plate on here. So first things first, Rubbing alcohol, I'm gonna clean this up before I stick it on. Get all the debris and grease and fingerprints off of here. Let's go ahead and peel off the backing. Just making sure I don't put it on upside down, which would not be ideal. There we go. All right, let me just, sorry guys, it might be hard to see, but I gotta get my hands in here and make sure everything is stuck on okay. There's a little bit of extra metal sticking out here, but that's no big deal. You can't even really, can't even see it. And then we can peel this off. And voila, there we go. All right, now we just got to adjust the depth on this so that it sticks out only the amount we need to get the switch on and the little bolt here. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Now we'll go ahead with a half inch wrench and tighten down the bolt. Don't go too crazy. You don't want to crack the plastic or anything. Just tight to make sure that it stays uh, in place. That's all you need to do. Next up, we will go ahead and put on the knob. Now what you want to do is make sure that the knob adjustment is in either the maximum or minimum and then line up the little line on the knob accordingly. That looks pretty good. It's a little hard to see from my angle, but looks good. Uh, and then you just need to go ahead and tighten down the knob in place with this little screw on the side. And voila, we're done. Beauty, that looks really good. With that done, we can go ahead and put our panel back in place. And here you go guys, the final result, our new three-way switch installed and it's connected to the timer which now has a relay connected to the aerator pump so we can keep those fish alive and healthy throughout the entire fishing day. There you have it guys, we're all done. We've installed our timer. So now we're really gonna get the most out of our aerator pump. We're gonna make sure that it's timed and we're gonna make sure the fish are healthy. You know, if, if, if you think about it, you know, we tend to put, what do we put in the live well? We put our best fish in the live well as bass fishermen. Walleye, we put the keepers in there, but when it comes to bass fishing, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna call your not so great fish and you're gonna put your best in your live well. So it's our responsibility as anglers to do our best to keep those fish healthy so that when you go to release them, they have the best chance possible out there. You're releasing them healthy in good shape to survive and spawn another day, okay? So take care of your fish. Fish care, super important. And remember, it is your responsibility just as it is mine, okay? So take care of your fish. Make sure your live well system is working properly. And if it's not, 
fix it up like we've done this year, okay? And of course, guys, as always, if you enjoyed the content, if you learned something, or if you have any questions or anything like that, whatever, anything, make sure that you're subscribed, make sure you hit the like button, help me grow the channel, make sure you hit the bell notification, and of course, questions, lay them down in the comments below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can, all right, guys? Thank you so much. We'll see you guys on the next installation. Peace.